advantage. Arterials are designed for them. However, they must take greater responsibility and not injure or kill vulnerable road users who have the right to share and safely cross these public facilities. In longer term, I'll wrap things up. The above efforts need to be programmed and sustainable. A short-term political reaction to the recent crashes is inadequate and unacceptable. PBOT, ODOT need to fully adopt and use the best design practices that we have out there. The tools are out there. They're not being used. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Roger. Thank you. Really hey, well Roger. Done. Give us your bio. Do we have some other voices? Hi, um, my name is Adam. Um, I just ride my bike every day. Um, and you know, I ride down Clinton mostly, and I'm just getting sick of people passing me way too closely and honking at me and not giving me enough space to just get home. And I feel like the city has created all these, they call them safe spaces for riding, but and they built out this greenway network and it turns out that they're not very safe because there are no diverters or there's not enough traffic coming and people are going way too fast. People are driving way too fast on them and not giving people enough space. Um, and I just, I'm just getting sick of it. Um, every day it's, you know, my life is at risk because people are not driving safely. And I just like to see more infrastructure built out to give people safe spaces to walk and to ride a bike. Thank you. Hey kids, um, come over and say something. I don't know, for me this is really about enforcement. Uh, you know, everybody's taking risks all the time to gain their own advantage, um, forgetting wherever they're trying to go, but the truth is everyone's trying to get somewhere. And uh, you know, the more shortcomings we're gonna take or they're gonna take, you know, I drive a car, well I drive a bike, I try to drive to the letter, or drive to the letter, and I see pretty much nobody doing that. Uh, you, guys, you know, it's really just about reaching across and making people realize that it, it looks like there's more and more people matters, showing up. It is about enforcement, not just with the law enforcement, but being willing to tell people that this is not about an us or them. Uh, this is not about a bike. This is not about a car. This is about everybody working together to get to where everyone needs to get. You know, if you're in a car and you're trying to get somewhere, you know, don't be reckless and selfish. You know, they wouldn't expect that of you. Uh, they would expect that of you to be, you know, courteous, but it's it's getting out of hand. There's a lot of uh, seems like people just feeling like they're not going to be the ones to cause the problem, or you know, they're above it. I mean, how many times have you seen an accident happen and all the rubbernecking, and then someone peels off, like looking at them, like it's oh, that person is you know an idiot driver or whatever. But the truth is, is you know, the speed limits are there for a reason, and uh, you know, every time we take take the risk, you know, upon ourselves. And you know, drivers or who else? It's you know, we're we're corroding the very reason we even have these laws in the first place. So, thank you. Um, my name's Hazel. I've lived in Portland for 20 years. I ride my bike every day. I have since I moved here. And in the last few years, I've become afraid every day when I ride my bike. Um, I, at least once a day I almost get run over, it's sometimes four or five times a day, and I commute four miles each way to work. Um, and if, if we want more people to ride bikes and to walk in this city, th this is not the way to do it. I, I, I keep thinking about how all the coverage of all these fatalities is going to discourage people from getting out there with us. I think if I didn't already ride, I'd be pretty terrified. Um, I'm terrified for my boyfriend when he rides. Um, and it, we shouldn't have to worry about our friends, our loved ones, our sons, our daughters, whoever, just that they want to get somewhere and not in a car. Thanks, Hazel. I'm standing out here right now and I see a lot of people shaking their heads driving by and I have to ask the question, what about our safety is cultural or, cultural or politically divisive? What exactly is people in disagreement about? Uh, I don't really have that answer right now, but it's it's often a question I hear when I see people pointing fingers and wanting to blame drivers or wanting to blame cyclists for breaking the law, what they perceive, or you know people walking the road. It seems as you know everybody can point blame at every which direction. 
But I think ultimately we're all looking for some level of accountability and enforcement of those accountabilities. And where is that? Has the cop got out of his car again? What? Has the cop got out of his car again? This is an open microphone right now. I think it helps for us to, you know, let folks know why we're out here. Maybe they don't hear what the whole conversation of what we're saying. We hear it. We're rallying each other. And they hear that we're frustrated by a system that allows unnecessary carnage to happen on a daily basis all been affected by it. What is the cost of society? And that's just the cost to the injuries that happen, which by the way I'd like to point out will happen regardless of whether the cars are run on electricity or water vapor or air. As long as the system is built like this we will have this kind of carnage. But then you add the pollution on top of that. 32,000 Americans die because of motor vehicle pollution every year. So just double the amount of people who are dying because they're hit by cars, or hit while they're in cars. People are dying of asthma and lung disease. That's according to the American Lung Association. That's 60,000 people. What is the cost of, to our society for that? It's ridiculous. Where else would we look? Even the only thing that even comes close is gun violence. <laughs> I'd love it if somebody else came up and spoke. Nick Caleb, I know you got the gift of gab. Why don't you come say it, say something? You're also running for office or something, isn't that right? Yeah, I don't know. I. It's really hard to talk about these things, and on, especially it's so close to the, the day of. I get really depressed really quickly when I see traffic fatalities, especially stuff that's really unavoidable. And The last few weeks and a couple months here have been really sad. Um, Petalpalooza has definitely made that a little bit lighter. There's been some really fun action going on with that, but I, I agree with Dan. Um, I lived in the Netherlands for a while, and um, I didn't even ride a bike when I went to the Netherlands. And it was so accessible, so fun. You never had to wear a helmet. Nobody was ever concerned about safety. And the history of their um, culture turning into a bike culture was not that it just was always a bike culture. It was something that they actually made political choices for. Um, in the 60s and early 70s, they were having a lot of fatalities associated with cars because after World War II, they built a, a society based on the automobile like most places did after World War II. And so they had highways, wide streets, and all the rest. And it became polluting, and, and people were dying in mass. Um, and people just got tired of it eventually and started campaigning really heavily um, against having just a totally car-centric society. And the thing that's interesting about it is that, you know, um, I think that the, the debate gets really dichotomize really quickly. We've got cars versus bikes or cars versus active transportation. And I don't, actually don't know anybody in the bike. Maybe there's some people in our, our bike community that are actually like advocating for the full phase out of cars. Um, I'm just acti advocating for mixed use transportation and having it safe so that we don't have to worry about our friends dying every time that they get out on the road. Um, and similarly, like what you were saying, I every time I leave the house, I'm fearful for my own safety. And my girlfriend is driving, you know, riding to work. I'm scared about her. And so, I don't know, it just seems like in 2015, with all the tools that we have and all the planning capacity that this city has, that we should be able to do something that, that really strikes a balance and protects people's lives. So hopefully we can do it. Thank you. And Nick is running for city uh, commissioner, so just so you know. So, my name is Keith Davis. I'm from Multnomah County Cop Watch. And 
one thing I'd like to point out, this is a little off topic, but uh, I've seen a lot of uh, anti-homeless comments on a lot of these bike forums around here saying that, you know, you guys need to crack down on the homeless and because uh, some small percentage of the homeless are involved with stealing bikes. Well, you know, you're you're actually criminalizing one of the most vulnerable segments of society if you're one of those people that is contributing to that commentary. And, you know, just because uh, there happens to be a few homeless bike thieves, don't go criminalizing the homeless to push your little agendas, okay? So that, that's what I got to say to a bunch of uh, bikers that are usually housed and have really nice bikes and might have had a bike or two stolen. You know what? I've had a, I've had a few bikes stolen myself. But I'm not going to go criminalize the whole homeless population like a lot of uh, narrow-minded people who uh, can't see through all the bullshit. Okay? So if you guys are, if you guys are one of these people taking part in these anti-homeless uh, charades and criminalizing the homeless over, uh, over the fact that there's a small percentage of homeless people that actually steal bikes, then shame on you, motherfucker, and you need to fucking grow up, and you need to fucking read a book, and a bunch of other shit, and you need to get some goddamn culture, okay? Because if you think that your little bike is worth fucking waging a cultural cleansing war on the homeless, then you got another thing coming. And you know what? So, if you guys, if you guys are a part of that, then you need to fucking stop with that bullshit, okay? Because I, 